On my recent video talking about the ending of 16, a lot of people commented believing the zombie episode was the end of the show, while others recollect the trauma of seeing this zombie special growing up. So I went back and rewatched it. I was thinking to myself, what, it's just an ordinary episode of 16? Oh my goodness. So yeah, there's a lot to unpack. As you may know, 16 is a Canadian cartoon, so it was airing in Canada since 2004. As an American, I didn't properly watch 16 until 2008 when it began began airing after the success of Total Drama Island. Total Drama aired in Canada in 2007 and was brought to the US in the summer of 08, and I thought it was a really great show with charming characters and writing, and I was really invested to see who would get eliminated each week. So when they announced a new show would be airing from the same creators, but it's an animated sitcom, I was excited, if not just for my love of Total Drama. I've read 16 also aired on Turbo Nick, Nickelodeon's web streaming service in 2005 for like 6 months, and also on T. Nick and Nicktoons, but I don't remember ever seeing it on here. It's kinda ironic 16 was shoehorned in as a new show due to the success of Total Drama when 16 was created three years before in 2004. So when they advertised it as a new show, I was like, okay, I could have sworn I've seen this before somewhere, but screw it, I'll watch whatever you put in front of me, Canada. Now you'd think they'd air the first episode of 16 to introduce the characters, establish the mall, show the friendship of these teens who are still getting to know each other. But no, they wanted to make a big first impression. So instead, the first aired episode in the US Cartoon Network was Due to the Living Dead, the season 1 finale in which the friends fight off a zombie apocalypse in the mall. I like how they said, screw airing in order, if we hit them with our biggest work first, kids will have to watch more, and for better or worse, it worked. So on the timeline, we got 16 airing in Canada, then Total Drama airing in Canada, followed by Total Drama in the US, followed by 16 in the US. There's one other thing that maybe influenced the zombie episode airing first in the US. It's a long shot, it's a game theory, but maybe the release of Dead Rising in 2006, a video game all about stopping a zombie horde in a giant shopping mall, influenced the decision to air this episode of 16 first. Zombies were pretty popular in the 2000s, and honestly grew even bigger after the 16th special with other games coming out in 08 like Left 4 Dead and the Nazi zombie game mode in Call of Duty World at War. So maybe the success of zombie games and media made executives think if people love total drama and people love zombies, airing this special first is a slam dunk. But as you may have already seen from the comments, the reactions were mixed to say the least. So let's talk about the actual episode. The special opens with Jude asleep at his job at the chicken stick it, waking up to the angry coach Halter who wants some spicy chili. Jude accidentally spills the whole bottle of hot sauce into the chili, which even causes the sprinklers to go off. Later, Jude talks about how he hasn't been sleeping much because he's been staying up until 4am watching B-movies and seems to be hallucinating that zombies are in the mall. Jen jump scares the group, not as a zombie, but because she has a big zit on her forehead that she was assured wasn't a big deal. Caitlin's going on a date with a new guy named Talon, and her conversation's cut short by a rude customer who seems either impatient for her lemonade or is a zombie. Also, the gal seems to be Caitlyn's old friend Trisha, but I guess she doesn't seem to recognize her in zombie form or something. Part of why the zombie premise for this episode works well is because we don't really have any idea why there's zombies in the mall in the first place. Like if Jude's hot sauce concoction caused the zombie outbreak, it'd be one thing, but they never really seem to explain it. They also try to hint maybe the zombies are just in Jude's head because he's not getting enough sleep, but now that we see it affecting other people like Caitlyn, it's getting a little weirder. Jonesy goes off to his new job selling lingerie, and it turns out there's a peephole where he can see the gals getting changed. He says guys don't really get jobs there, but he told them he's gay. 16 had like, just the right amount of edge, where it was like, whoa, I didn't know you could say that in a cartoon. And like, without praising it or critiquing it, it fell into a balance that was pretty fresh, even if it wouldn't be considered groundbreaking in other genres or demographics. It was like, whoa, they said lingerie and gay on cartoon to network, in the same sentence, no less. Apparently in the original airing in the US, Jonesy said he got the job because he's famous, not gay. Which seems to be a joke that's aged properly, considering how many celebrities have done some bad stuff, especially as of late. Also, Jonesy calls Wyatt when he's watching a gal change, and I don't know, calling up the homie describing a gal changing, is that weird to anyone else? Like, setting aside the legally ambiguous peeping. Okay, she's blonde hot and she's taking off her coat? Now her sweater? Want me to keep going? Yes. 
And why are you asking if you should go further? In the background, we see Wyatt's crush and coworker Serena is a zombie biting her current boyfriend, Chad. And this is the first real zombie bite that happens on screen. But there's something very real about having it play in the background of the scene. Like, it doesn't sensationalize the bite or tell you to look at it. But if you're paying attention, you'll begin to notice the zombies forming in real time. This is followed up by the second grossest part of the episode, in which Wyatt and Jonesy interact with Julie, the taco stand girl, who's now a zombie. These zombie designs evoke such a visceral response. The color palettes are so striking to me. The gray skin gives me a feeling of death more than zombies, which cartoons often depicted as green and bright. But I think the red eyes and the yellow teeth also evoke strong responses because they're such sensitive parts of our body we sympathize with. It doesn't help that Julie has such a massive overbite that really accentuates her crooked yellow teeth, but I can totally see this design scaring kids. On top of this, one of her fingers falls off into their tacos, which is not only gross, but acts as a turning point to indicate the zombie problem is actually real and growing bigger. Also, I thought they were getting tacos, not Wendy's. <laughs> Jonesy's not too disturbed by the thumb, as he goes back to his job to peep again, and his spying is interrupted by a zombie coming in and attacking the gal, who sees Jonesy through the peephole and begins attacking him. Wyatt and Jude come in to help save Jonesy, and the three move on to save the gals. They see the khaki barn overrun with zombies, which is ironic, since Nikki always refers to the customers of the store as zombies, and the workers as clones. Okay, don't laugh, but zombies have taken over the khaki barn. Okay, Nikki, don't laugh, but dragons have taken over Dave and Buster's, so now what? We see Jen's coworker infect her boss, and we even see Coach Halter rip the arm off his employee. Like, oh my god, that's pretty graphic. Especially for a cartoon like 16. You know, the show about teens just goofing off in the mall. Also, Coach Halter doesn't even use the ripped off arm as a weapon or food. He just throws it away, like it's just a petty arm ripoff. Jen defends herself from her infected boss, Boss, wielding sports equipment and eventually locking him in the penalty box, and they later save Nikki and the clone from the zombies, but they're too late to save Caitlyn's boyfriend, who got bit by a kid in the lobby before they went to see a movie, and we see him slowly transform into a zombie before our eyes. Ugh, I totally want to kiss you too, but not so fresh breath, sweetie. So the group goes on to form a small alliance with the rest of the surviving humans, which includes probably the funniest named character in the whole show, Darth Maul. But like, M-A-L-L. -L, like a Maul. A Star Wars super fan, as well as Ron the Rental Cop, who were introduced to by him quite literally ripping a zombie in half, as we see their head and spine crawling on the ground. I feel this ensemble of characters teaming up is a lot funnier if you've actually seen their interactions throughout the season, because you'd know the Rent-A-Cop is like their arch enemy that's always antagonizing the teens and always suspects they're up to something. He's a former soldier turned mall cop, but he does have a soft spot, which makes him pretty funny at times. Watching this, I do wonder if Ron truly hates the teens, or if he's just fulfilling his instincts as a soldier by helping take care of the other survivors. Regardless, Darth being one of the stronger members of the group seems to be a common an element of doomsday, apocalypse, zombie stories where those without high status or power may rise to the top of this new society. So maybe using Darth as a main character of this special could be referencing this staple of zombie movies and apocalypse stories. Otherwise, he's pretty random to include in this special, but he's kind of like the random guy you know who claims he'd be amazing in a zombie apocalypse for some reason, that always makes sure you know he's ready. Caitlin brings back her boyfriend Talon, who's now on a leash with duct tape over his mouth and I feel like I could make a joke about this, but I just don't feel like it. So imagine a joke in your head here. She rips his duct tape off, and his scream alerts the other zombies to their location. Ron, the rental cop, valiantly sacrifices himself for the group, and they snap his neck like, oh my god. We see a few zombies outside the barrier eat the spicy chicken Jude concocted earlier in the episode, and the zombies die after eating it, which eventually teaches the teens that the spicy madness sauce will kill the zombies. They get super soakers full of the madness sauce, shooting the zombies, and honestly, I thought the sauce would turn them from zombies back 
back into regular humans. Even more than this, I thought the sauce would be the root cause for the zombie apocalypse, not the solution. But no, these zombies are just dead. Unless I missed it, there doesn't seem to be a noted cause for the zombie outbreak, which makes the episode all the more creepy to have this element unexplained. Despite their new hot sauce weapons, the gang begins running out of ammo, and the zombies keep attacking. The zombie special ends with Jude successfully repairing his relationship with his ex-girlfriend Star, who he's been avoiding this whole time because he accidentally threw up in her mouth in a previous episode of the show. Which again, you wouldn't understand if you were just watching the premiere in the US. The two accept their fate, surrounded by zombies, and embrace one last time. This moment, however, is cut short by Zombie Jen walking up and popping the pimple on her forehead, causing Jude to throw up in Star's mouth again, and yeah, I'm just gonna blur this whole scene. You're welcome. Jude's scream is cut short because this was all just a dream. I don't think anyone really likes when shows or movies turn out to be dreams, because it feels kind of disingenuous, but at the same time, it does allow for shows to do fun, crazy plots without worrying about the continuity later down the road. Like, you don't need people theorizing 10 years later, is this character still a zombie? I feel like framing this as a dream may also help lessen the trauma inflicted on the poor unsuspecting kids watching this, because I've had several people tell me they were afraid to go to the mall or lost sleep because of this special, so saying, aw, it's just a dream might have helped a little. Framing it as a dream might also help create parallel connections between the lessons we learn from dreams with those we learn from fiction. In this case, Jude learns from his dream to live every day like it's his last or something, and ask Star out. The equivalent lesson we can learn from this piece of fiction is to not eat spicy chicken in the mall from a sleeping stoner skater dude that drops the entire bottle of hot sauce into the chicken. Overall, it's a cool episode, and I'm always taken aback by how violent it is, with people getting chopped in half and impaled by lightsabers, and the action and stakes were constantly ramping up. Even the dialogue is crazy from Jonesy and Wyatt telling everyone they were gay so they could peep on the lingerie changing room, or even referring to Darth as Yoda or a Jedi, or even just calling him Darth Maul and giving him a lightsaber in the first place. And while the real first episode of 16 introduced us to Caitlyn and the new part-time jobs the teens got, it seems like Cartoon Network thought it just wouldn't be as interesting as starting the show with a crazy zombie special. And I gotta say, from all the comments I've been seeing, I think they were right. So let me know what you think. Did you see the special growing up, and did it scare you? I'd love to know your stories about seeing the zombie special, or maybe any other cartoon like this that might have traumatized you. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you wanna, and I'll talk to you next week. Alright, bye.